All right, so what we have learned so far in Chapter 11, don't start filling in numbers, just listen, I promise. So we have um, posted from our journals to our subsidiary ledger. We have two subsidiary ledgers, accounts receivable and accounts payable. Accounts receivable, it says customer and customer number, and then there is only a debit balance column. Okay? Our accounts payable ledger says vendor and vendor number, and they have a credit only column. Now I also want you to realize that our subsidiary ledger accounts are three digits. Accounts receivable will start with one because they're assets. Our accounts payable will start with two because they're liabilities. Now, when we take a look at our general ledgers, they have a four-digit account number. Always remember your beginning account number. The beginning number will relate to the classification. So we've gone through, we posted individually. Yesterday we learned how to post totals. So we are now posting masters. We get posting. Now, what you're going to find is our numbers are bigger and harder than what we did the first time when we posted. Agreed? No. Because before they didn't have any change and they weren't in the thousands or the hundreds of thousands. So what we're going to have right now, stop filling it in, is people make mistakes. Okay. Now, if we have a business that is going through and doing their books by hand, very similar to what we're doing, but on paper, like we did for the simulation for Rico Sanchez, the odds of someone make a mistake for posting or journalizing can happen. Okay? So what we have in 11.5 is what do we do when we find a mistake? So for example, let's say that we're in uh, the month of October, and I realized in September I accidentally charged Trista $75, but it was really supposed to be Michaela. So right now, Trista's account says she owes $75 more than what she should, right? Oh, I'm calling you your sister's name, aren't you? Oh, Caitlin, sorry. Everyone's looking at me and smiling. I'm like, I did something wrong. What is it? Okay, your sister comes from the last hour. Okay, Caitlin, sorry. So Caitlin's account is $75 more than what it should be. And Michaela's sitting pretty over there because she's like, I doesn't say I owe anything. So I have to, I can't go back and just erase it. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to do a correcting entry, and then I have to post it. So when you do a correcting entry, you have to look at what was affected that should not have been and what, should have ha what it should have gone into. So it's very easy if you have two subsidiary ledger accounts that are very close in name. Let's say you have Office Mart and Office Supply Store, and they both start with Office. I've been guilty and aptly of going through and typing the first letters and then not hitting the right second one. Somebody could easily do that in any type of software and not getting the right one. So we're not going to go back in your race. What we do is we make what is called a correcting entry. And that's really what we're looking at in 11.5 is going through and fixing a mistake from a previous month. If it was just a line above from what we did, I would go erase and fix it. But a previous month, and it's already been posted, you don't go back in your race and then change your post reference and then do different things. You just do a correcting entry the next month. Now, I will say, businesses that use accounting software like QuickBooks, they don't have to post. It does it for them automatically. So for example, when Ben is doing things for the school store, and he is writing a check out to the yearbook, what do you think we're doing for yearbook? Why would the school store write a check for the yearbook? An ad, okay? So tell me my accounts that are being affected. Advertising expense. Advertising expense and cash. So QuickBook knows if I'm writing out a check, cash has to be credited and it automatically updates the running balance immediately. I have to go through and assign what expense is going to be relating to it because I could be buying anything, but then I would choose advertising expense. So all types of automated software, you don't have to do posting, but you have to understand 
how posting works. So if you make a mistake, you can see where it is being affected. That's why it's important that you understand the process. But I will tell you there's going to be very few businesses that actually go through and do all of this hand posting because the software is easy enough to do it for them. But if it makes a mistake, it's harder to understand how to find and fix it. Okay? So let's take a look at our mistakes and figure out how to fix them. So our directions are going to be important on this one because it's going to tell us what was the mistake was and how we need to fix it. So we're going to go through our general ledger and accounts receivable ledger for client interiors are given. Using the current year, we're going to journalize the following transaction on page 6 of the general journal. Memorandum is the source document, is abbreviated as M. So June 3rd, discovered then a sale and account to Howell Clinic, May 25th, S346, was incorrectly charged to the account of Housley Dance Studio. So in order to do this, we have to know which account was affected that should not have been. Howell or Housley? Which one? Logan, which one? Yeah. Okay, so Housley was affected and should not have been. What do we have to do to Housley? Okay, because this is an accounts receivable account, so it was debited last month and now we need to credit it. So we're going to credit Housley Dance Studio and what's going to be debited? Howell Clinic. That is your correcting entry. Now this is going to go a little bit different because typically we're going to do M57 is my source document because this is the one for fixing the mistake. Typically, if I were to write Howell Clinic in the general ledger, what did we have to write there before? In last chapter, if I wrote accounts, if I wrote Don's quality market, what did I have to write with it? Accounts payable, right? Now, I want you to understand why. Stop and listen and stop filling it in. This is why you get things wrong on the test, because you don't listen to the explanation. You just rush through, say, I'm done, and don't understand the concept. Last chapter, when we used the general ledger, any time I affected an accounts receivable or accounts payable account, I had to use the account accounts receivable slash Howell Clinic or accounts payable Don's Quality Market. I don't need to for this transaction. Why? So the account accounts receivable is not impacted because we have a customer that was affected. So the balance from all of our customers stays the same. It's just a matter of it has to come out of the correct persons. So if I were to write accounts receivable slash Howell Clinic, I would be debiting and crediting accounts receivable for the same amount. It would have a net influence of nothing. So we want to save yourself the time to not have to do that. So the first thing we do is we post it here, then, or excuse me, journalize it, and then we need to post it. Again, our month is June. If you have not posted on the bottom, please make sure you do that. Post reference is going to be G6 because you're posting from General Journal, page 6. Now, it does notice that Housley Dance Studio will have a balance of zero. Our directions does tell us right here to type in a zero in the balance column to indicate a zero balance, so I will need to put that in there, not leaving it blank, and then put account number 170 back up on top. That truly is what section 11.5 is. The hardest part for fixing an error in journalizing is figuring out which account was affected that should not have been. 
Now, this example, it was really easy because they only gave you those two accounts and ledgers to look at, but in real life, you have to go through and do some deep thinking about it. <coughs> you should be able to do the on your own since most of you have it open already. 